Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider, and today we're going to take a look at Topaz Glow. Now, Topaz Glow can be used uh, to do a lot of interesting things to a photograph, especially that fractal art. Um, so I'll show you, basically, this is kind of something that you could get out of Topaz Glow. If you can see, on uh, it basically takes your highlights and it just kind of warps them and turns them into these waves of light, which is actually pretty interesting on certain photographs. However, I've also used it for stuff like this, to give it a subtle boost all around your photograph in ways that I haven't really seen the capability in something like Photoshop without doing out quite a bit of work. So let's go ahead and jump into Topaz Glow and see what we can do with this. I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and go to Glow. All right, so here's the basic interface with Topaz Glow. And if you're used to something like Topaz Impression, you'll see that uh, it's very, very similar to Topaz Impression. On the upper left-hand side, you've got your magnifications, you've got your ability to see your previews, uh, also be able to see your original if you want to at any time. Down here, you have the strength of the overall effect and then the blend modes. And these are very important and they'll come in to play later. Now on your right hand side, you're going to see all of the different featured presets. And like I said before, this can be used to make some really interesting fractal art like you see here, uh, which on this image I don't think is very effective, but there are some pretty cool things that we can do with Topaz Glow. So let's go ahead and get into the settings. We'll go ahead and reset all of them and take a look at how Topaz Glow works. So the best way to do this is to get yourself acquainted with it by zooming into the photograph. So I'm actually going to zoom in quite a bit to about 100% to an area that has uh, differences in light. So I've got a nice light variation here. I've got some trees here. So it's going to go ahead and give me a nice overall look. And I like the little preview that you see here too. So we can go ahead and close that preview so it doesn't distract us. So if you look, the first thing is the glow strength. Actually, let's go ahead and move all of these down. On the right hand side, you're first going to see primary glow, secondary glow, color, and finishing touches. So your primary glow is going to be that main one, then you've got that secondary glow that comes in, and you have the ability to make them light or dark. Now on top of that, you can also go into individual colors, which we'll go ahead and look at that also, and then finishing touches like vignettes and sharpness and so on and so forth. So let's go into that primary glow first. Let's start it out with a light glow. There's a light glow and a dark glow. So if you move the glow strength up and we keep it on light glow, you'll see that it's an overall light haze over our entire photo. But if we move it to the dark glow, we get uh, those little areas of fractal areas uh, turn into areas of darkness rather than areas of lightness like you see in this photograph. So you can achieve two different effects with this. And at any time, you can switch back and forth as you're working throughout the uh, adjustments here. So that's actually pretty cool. The effect sharpness is going to make the fractals overall sharper. So if we bring that all the way up, we get a really sharp fractal effect to our image. If we move it all the way down, again, it's a little bit uh, less of a sharp uh, effect. Now. One thing to be said here is that these individual sliders work really fast. So um, even a slight increase in any one of these adjustments, I mean, we're just talking like an eighth of an eighth of an inch, I guess, movement over is going to give you uh, quite a different effect. So you don't have to ramp it all the way up in order to see this. For tutorial purposes, I'm going to ramp things up so we can see exactly what happens. And a lot of times, any software that you're working with, it's always a great idea to um, really ramp up those effects so that you get an understanding of what that effect is doing. So let's go into Electrify. So we'll move the Electrify up. The Electrify is going to give those sharp fractals an overall boost in brightness and, and just kind of, I guess, electrify them just like the, the name implies. So if we zoom out here, let's go back to our original, you can see that we have quite a different effect than what we started with, right? But then we have the simplified details. So zoom back in a little bit, 100%, right in that area. So we have the simplified details. You can overall uh, bring down the uh, sharpness of those effect sharpness by moving the simplified details up, which is actually very similar to just moving the effect sharpness down. It's almost the exact same effect. But if you find yourself way up here and you want to ramp that down a little bit, just move that simplified details over. 
the edge color is going to give the overall um, fractals a certain color to the edges and the higher you bring it up the, the, the brighter it gets and that's really bothering my eyes so I'm going to bring that down quite a bit alright so then we have the detail strength and just like the name implies you can strengthen those uh, the details of the overall fractals that you've got in there as well we'll bring that edge color all the way down because that's really starting to bother me okay so you can see we kind of have like this almost like crazy looking sketch here that uh, we wouldn't normally have in any other way of creating an image. Now this fractal art really looks really great um, on on uh, animals and such, but ramped up to this effect doesn't really help this image. And as, as a matter of fact, if we look at this photograph, we had a, a couple down here talking and uh, actually it looks like they're both on their cell phones. Couples don't talk anymore. They text each other. Looks like they're texting each other down here, but that detail completely gets obliterated. All right. So you can't actually see any of that anymore. Just keep that in mind when you're working with this fractal art is that uh, while you're getting a nice fractal look looking artistic image, a lot of what detail you had before might just get washed away unless you start working at it at a very uh, less of a pace here. As you can see, as I bring these down, we can start to see some of those details come back, but even at that kind of a glow strength, we don't have those people there. Now, if we bring that all the way down, the glow strength all the way down, so there's no fractal, we really just have this over sharpened, really nasty looking photograph. So you really want to bring that glow strength up to kind of cover that up. Um, but you can also use Topaz Glow just to sharpen an image if you'd like to also. So if we brought all these down and brought the uh, effect sharpness up, we just have a really sharpened image here. So if I zoom in, it's just very very sharpened. It's like a high pass sharpen um, on speed or something. Yeah, so we can bring that down or up. And this is a way that you could sharpen an image if you wanted to. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it doing this way, but hey, it's possible if that's something that you wanted to do. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the, that glow strength back up. Let's bring the electrify up a little bit. Simplify those details a little bit. Bring the detail strength up and detail size. We didn't hit this one yet. Uh, that's the overall size of those, those details, how, how large you make those details. And if you bring it down, it'll also give it like this dreamlike quality. So the size is not quite very large. All right, so the brightness is the overall brightness of the uh, the primary glow effect. I don't really like to adjust these brightness. If I do, I'm only going to go very slightly. Like I said, some of these adjustments move really fast and really hard. And then the contrast, that's just going to give you an overall um, contrast between those fractal areas. Saturation, very much the same thing. Line rotation, if you move this over, it's going to go ahead and manipulate how the fractals are affecting the photograph. So you can get some pretty interesting effects with that as well. And then the glow spread is about how big the overall glow is going to be. You see it gets larger and larger and larger as we go up. So then you have your secondary glow, which is very much the same as your primary glow. Starts off the same way, and you can bring those effects up and do very much the same. Okay, So let's go ahead and look at a way that this can be useful on a photograph like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work through this pretty quickly. Primary glow, I'm going to bring that up to about 0.11. And then the effect sharpness, I'm going to bring that up to about 0.12. I've already preset these before. I've actually saved this as a setting for me because this is a nice subtle fractal effect that I like. The uh, simplified details, I'm going to bring that up to 0.44. Edge color, I'm going to go ahead and leave alone. Detail strength, I'm going to bring that up a slight bit. And then detail size, I'm going to bring that down a slight bit. So that's my first one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that one down and go into my secondary glow. My secondary glow, bring that up just a slight bit to about 0 0.09. My effect sharpness, same thing, about 0 0.09. And then electrify, just a little bit of electrify to that. Simplify details, I'll bring that up just a slight bit. So now we've got this, uh, this overall very subtle glow here is where glow can actually be pretty powerful and that's down here in your strength and your blend mode. If we change this blend mode to something like soft light, you can see that we get this nice 
warm photograph and it, it brings a certain texture to the image and brings out certain elements to the image that wouldn't necessarily be brought out with a normal soft light layer. If I, if I just go ahead and went into Photoshop and duplicated that background layer and made this soft light effect on the photograph, it wouldn't look like this. But what I also like is the ability to control the color in here. So now I can go to the individual color, of, let's say red, and find out where red is. So first of all, to find out where red is in this photograph, I'm just going to ramp up that saturation all the way up. Just bring it all the way up and see what, where red is. Okay. So now I can go ahead and say, okay, those red areas, I want them to be a little bit darker. So I can bring down the lightness in the reds. So I can make those reds a slight bit darker. Then I can go into the oranges and let's say make the oranges a little bit lighter. Maybe brighten it up in just the orange areas. The orange saturation, I can bring that up if I wanted to or bring it down if I wanted to make a more realistic effect from what I had before when I started this photograph. And then the orange hue, if I wanted to change it to a little bit more yellow or green and then if I wanted to go this way, there. but I, I really like where orange is right now. And I can do this for each individual color. I'm just going to go ahead and zero this out. Then I can go into yellow. Same thing. If I want to see where yellow is, just bring the saturation all the way up on yellow. It looks like there's a lot of yellow in the trees. So I'll bring that up a little bit. Maybe even change the hue to a little bit greener so that those trees have a slight more green presence to them. And then maybe bring the yellows down a little bit in the lightness and then go into the greens, bring the green lightness up a little bit and then ramp up the green saturation a little bit and really kind of bring out those trees. And I'm doing all of that right here within Topaz Glow. Obviously some of the stuff you can do in Photoshop if you wanted to as well, but you have the ability to do it right here in Topaz Glow. And then with the finishing touches, you can also throw uh, some more sharpness on there if you wanted to, and some vignettes as well. Uh, that's pretty nice to have those in here. Uh, when it's set to soft light, you won't see those vignettes quite as sharp as you would if it was just the regular photo. So we'll go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. So here we are after Topaz Glow with that subtle Topaz Glow effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new history state so we can compare these. Okay, so this is the new history state. This is with the Topaz Glow effect. So I'm going to go back to where I was before Topaz Glow, duplicate that background layer, and change it to soft light. And then I'll bring this one up and over on top of this one so you can see the difference. So I didn't quite get all of the effects with that duplicated soft light layer that I did with the Topaz Glow soft light layer. So while you can use Topaz Glow for some really interesting fractal work, you can also use it to create some really nice uh, subtle effects on your photograph that just kind of ramp up the radiance of the photo. And there's a ton of presets that um, Topaz has provided in Topaz Glow that, that can help you out there as well. So just remember that that blending option is a really good idea to change if you just want a subtle ramped up HDR looking photograph. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider, and this was just a, a brief look at Topaz Glow.